Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon yeah. Podcast. If you missed it, uh, Nick was just talking about... COVID. The and by the way, no, the did everyone read that it was almost definitely from gain of function that they were being sloppy in Wait, the lab? Nobody on. cares. We did our pre-roll where we were talking about stuff that couldn't make it on the podcast because it was like, we don't want to record that. But your opening line after saying welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast is that COVID was invented in a Chinese no, lab. No, not invented. It was... <laughs> It, it was escaped. escaped. It grew legs. I'm just saying nobody cares anymore. Nobody cares that a virus could grow legs and scurry out of a laboratory. In the form of a pangolin. <laughs> Get on an airplane. Contagion pangolin. style. Oh, uh, that's so boy. funny that the word is pangolin. <laughs> <laughs> that it's like, wait, it's not penguin? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it's pangolin? <laughs> Who, an animal none of us knew existed yeah. until it got us all sick yeah. and turned us all into weaponized human beings. That dulcet tone that you're hearing right now is our friend Nick Kroll. Nick, how are you? I'm well. Thank you for having me. The little big boy himself. <laughs> He's here. Nick it, is our most requested guest to have. That is true. You've been on before. I've been on. I think I was on during the pandemic. During the sham. During the hoax. During the hoax. Before we found out about Natasha's theory about gain of function <laughs> and the <laughs> Wuhan lab. It's not a theory. <laughs> Do the leg. <laughs> Mommy. Mommy, I'm it's a pangolin. Reading, I'm just <laughs> reading um, an article, you know, that's been approved. By it's been approved. <laughs> the article's been approved. You know, like a well, a news article. I'm trying to figure out what to do with my legs because I'm wearing a short pant. Let's okay. see. And the socks. I'm, I would normally wear this. Without oh, they're a not. Sock. They're not flashy socks. So it's not a flashy sock, but they're it's clean, a flashy though. shoe. Yeah. It's a great so shoe. So I'm I'm trying to figure out what are we in a are we in a why I want to. I think you look pretty good. I think Thanks. that's a good call with the shoes. Do you um, know what I mean? We though? can in post. We have like a crazy um, post production team. Okay, you guys can. Sunday, we can. You can paint them out. out. You can paint out my legs. We could put um, Yeezys on if you want. If that's yeah, something honestly, you're into. Yeah. Oh, right so would now, you wear shoes like that? Would I wear Nick's shoes? Uh, to be honest. Why do they have things on the side? Why are you laughing? Wait, what are the why do they clean? Go why wide? are you laughing at what Nick's the, cool shoes? I mean, they look cool, but I'm like. Why do they go wide on the side? That's, yeah, like, because, well, because it seems like that would be good for a terrain shoe, but tell me you're taking those hiking. Oh, I, I take these only on pastel hikes. <laughs> I'm only allowed to go on pastel hikes and these for for the, those watching I am wearing Yeezys and I'm also selling Yeezys on my website now directly from Kanye. Oh cuz you're a, that's right cuz you're a hype beast and you used to be despite the fact that you're truly one of the busiest people I know yeah. you've got uh, you've got you know like what the fourth season fifth season sixth sixth season of Big Mouth you've got human resources he has his new special, special little big boy out l- uh, wow. despite all of it uh-huh you're in line at the Supreme Store oh, 24 to, to 36 hours early to get the I latest am, drop. I am online yeah. with, and you can cut this if you want. Asian teens? <laughs> yes. Is that what you're going to say? Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll take the bullet for yeah. you. <laughs> um, I I do. I'm a, look, I'm a hype piece. End of the day. Yeah. I love it. That's but now you, you ask kids to wait online, they don't care because they're just looking at their phones and nobody nobody cares where they yeah, are. Yeah, they're like, I'll look, I may as well be online somewhere. Oh, you think if I'm the, gonna be online on my phone. You think the advent of the long line hype beast thing has to do with the fact that people are not bored in lines anymore? Not necessarily. I'm just saying that I've seen them in line and now everyone has a phone, right? Yeah, Giannis Papas had this bit about how we've cured boredom. And when he said that phrase, I mm-hmm. thought that, that really hit me. It's like, yeah. They just algorithmed boredom out of our lives. And now now we just, yeah. anytime there's any break. Well, I used to think of cigarettes, like, oh, yeah. I feel like cell phones were fucking death for cigarettes. That's <laughs> just fascinating. A little. Oh, you're so right. You, you know, would just like, go smoke a cigarette. Yeah, if you were bored or alone, you would just, like, go and smoke. And that would kill the time and the right. feeling of solitariness. And now you just have a phone, so you can go outside even, or just like get on your phone and check out. Right, and it won't. There's no impending doom. It's just a very slow, yeah. creeping doom. Yes, that comes with the phone. Yes, a, a cigarette feels more healthy <laughs> than yeah than the phone. Do yeah, you, because it's like social and you talk. And yeah. Do you miss smoking cigarettes all the time? Do you miss smoking cigarettes? Mm-hmm. I could Me smoke too. one a day. I I I I can't. I no, I can't either. No, you not. could smoke one a day. Mm-hmm. No, I would like to, but then Moshe would get jealous, <laughs> uh-huh, and then I would uh-huh. start smoking, and yeah, then yeah. I would die. Yeah, I didn't. If COVID taught me one thing, it's don't fuck with your lungs. But I thought mm. the whole thing with with cigarettes was like it's like the the greatest weapon against COVID. There was an article that this is why your what Wuhan lab theory article. It's not you, my theory, it Moshe. It is your theory. 
<laughs> little legs scurrying out. <laughs> Mommy pangolin. I love that like a pangolin is the reasonable thing <laughs> to believe in. Oh, right. We're all dubious about <laughs> that. Like, what was the animal's name? The guy's like, I don't know. Fucking pangolins. What? You're like, is that a penguin? It's a circus penguin. It's yeah. a circus penguin. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Nick, I have a serious question to ask you. Okay. Um, I have a likely jokey answer. Okay. <laughs> but this is actually serious. And I'm in. If we could just... It's Let's kinda, bring it down. It kind of relates to what Natasha's talking about with the lab leak and mm-hmm. stuff like that. My theory. Um, <laughs> what is Harry Styles taste like? <laughs> like, like, what is it like to kiss him? Or yeah. what does he taste like when I eat his flesh? <laughs> oh, I bet he tastes like cigarettes. Pangolin. Pangolin. Yeah. It's got to be pangolin. He's cute enough to still smoke. Oh, and British. All those European people, they yeah. still smoke. Wait, how do they... Music, yeah. British, that, that, to, that, and then, yeah. Young, I think young that, dude. Yeah, they... I'm wondering, I feel like smoking got less, did get generally less cool, but a lot of very cool young people smoke because they still got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Harry tastes, I don't know. I feel like Harry's just, it it is all very, uh, very cool. Everything about him is cool. Yeah. Like in a non, I I don't mean that like disparagingly. You know what I mean? It's just I have to say, that's kind of how I feel about my daughter. Is she cool? I just feel like everything she like she just got it yeah like like she even put my bracelet on the different the different wrist than i usually do and you're like this is better i just trust her i don't know she just seems like she knows more than this me. is like classic <laughs> parenting delusion let me guess nick you think your son is like really cool and special <laughs> Yes, but it's different because he <laughs> is. is. When my, my, he, yeah, no, when he puts a bracelet on whatever part of my body, I accept it. My brother's. I'm just saying, my, I take. I, I I think she knows something I don't know because like she just seems like she's got it. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. It's not that you're wrong. It's that you have um, love colored glasses. Mm. How, how is um how is life as as a dad now? Well, I just got it. Yeah. What's that? Do you I, relate to that? At I all? do. I mean, I just got a new prescription for love color glasses, <laughs> and <laughs> and I actually just got one of, for love potion sixty nine. Oh, I don't wow. know if you're familiar with that. See that? That's honestly, not related to parenting. One, but it is related to Jewish parody songs. <laughs> <laughs> love potion sixty nine. Is that what it's? You, did you mean to say that? Wait, ninety nine, ninety nine. Wait, number nine. L- number nine. <laughs> yeah, but I love that you thought it was love potion sixty nine, and I love that you went to Jewish parody. Of course, because what I I thought when you said Jewish parody, and you probably aren't Jewish enough to know about this. What? And you're very Jewish. You think, I'm pretty fucking Jewish. You think he's Jewish. more Jewish than you? In certain regard, no, Nick I'm is, not. Nick I'm is not. definitely, but, you're, I, am. You're, but with, I am. Without question, more Jewish than me in yeah. some aspects, but in yeah. some aspects, no one can hold a candle to me. I agree that. And, and, this and is, whatever candle that might is be. Is your mom Jewish? A Friday night, a Shabbat <laughs> candle. A <Havdala> candle. Havdala <laughs> candle. <laughs> Guaranteed you don't know this. There was yeah. a, a there was the a weird owl yes. of the... Two ultra, live Jews? The, no, more than that. Okay. Of the ultra orthodox community, <laughs> uh, by the name of Country Yussi and the Stiebel Hoppers. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> what his stick was was that he would take modern pop songs mm-hmm. and he would weird out them, but not to make them funny, but to make them incredibly Jewish. Well, then he was doing what ninety percent of Jewish people do, which is make parody songs. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> That's like, like a main thing. It is. It's like I, I, I'm telling you. Everywhere you go, every event, there is going to be at some point someone's going to get up and do a parody of a very popular current or former song. So when they say <laughs> when they say we run the media, we're like yes, but it's one very specific but it's, it's slice the of media. Jewish parody song, <laughs> not Jewish parody song. We control a vast majority of that. Although was, I don't think is Weird Al Jewish. Yank, I just as Yankovic. we were talking, Yankovic sounds. Think couldn't. he is. I feel like because he's like the accordion. Maybe is. He's got to be Yankovic. Right. Yankovic. <laughs> <laughs> Different than like Moshe Slushy and the Yussi Crew, Country Yussi and the Steve Whoppers. And he had a song. Oh, this is embarrassing. He had a song called. Uh, this was one of his non-parody songs. One uh-huh. of his sincere ballads mm-hmm. called "Deaf Man in the." Sh- they're deaf man in the stiebel or deaf man in the uh-huh. and it was about this guy whose dad was deaf and mm-hmm. of course my dad was deaf yeah and i rem- so remember so famously famously deaf <laughs> my dad now famously dead and but at the time was deaf mm-hmm. and and then this kid goes uh he was davening for yom kippur and then he like somehow killed it and they're like what is it you were thinking of that made you sing so well and then he got all serious he goes you know my dad was deaf he said and last night he passed away 
It's the first time that my father's heard wow. me pray. And I'm like eight years old crying, listening to a Walkman of Country oh. Yossi. Have you heard this before? No. This is not something you share with lovers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just with an entire honest, podcast universe. I zoned out through that whole story. Oh, you didn't even listen to the story. <laughs> no, I, listened, I did. I, but, but it is interesting. If you've been together long enough as a couple, like you can watch each person in a couple choose moments where they're just like <laughs> drop <laughs> they're out. out. We, <laughs> we need to like turn off for a little bit. Of course. What about hearing your dog snore while the podcast goes on? Do you turn off for that? Do you guys Do you snore? hear it right now? <laughs> yeah. You can hear it. Oh, you're not wearing headphones. That's yeah, why. That's oh, fine, right? Com- Do I- no, you Wait, don't have to. But can wait, I just say I this don't is mind. a cute the snore? The only reason we have these headphones is so that we can drown out the noise of our so dying So as opposed dogs. to Pablo, that- this is a cute snore. Headphones on for that. Oh yeah, you gotta listen. To- oh come on, <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> I'm just saying that's no, no, cute. That's, that's the fun. That's the best thing. That is the best <laughs> podcast I've heard all year. You know, it's funny as <laughs> your she, dog snoring. She w- just woke up and she does not appreciate what you just did. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, um, Nick. You, Barely. <laughs> Nick, how long have you been married? I've Three been years, married, four years? No, I've been married um, almost two years. What is your? Are you? Are you gonna? That's just a golden the- age. <laughs> that's a golden age, baby. Let the golden <laughs> age begin. Oh yeah, before it sours, and it will sour. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> what is your primary thing that you you like your c- cause of conflict that is your fault? And I'll tell you, that's like, not fair to, to ask. No, him just that? to get vul- just to Lily's get vul- not even here. Just, no, I'm I'm not asking about Lily. I'm asking, but just to get vulnerable. Mm-hmm. For us, Natasha's, we have big, one core issue. Natasha's big issue, yeah. uh, the thing that she's bad about uh-huh. is um, she won't let me borrow very insignificant things like a, a pair of headphones or a tote bag. Uh-huh. She'll start getting near tears if I ask to borrow it. That's because her Because motion weakness. is chaos. And so he'll like sure. all of a sudden, all of the headphones are gone and mm-hmm. all yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. my, my computer like, has been logged in on his. So all my everything's gone from my computer. It's all on his stuff. Or, uh-huh. you know, it's like crazy making. She gets like, go, like uh-huh. Gollum with his ring. With uh-huh. his precious, but about like really insignificant ten dollar pair of Delta headphones or no, something. No, but it's like I my life is more is I would need my life to be less chaotic, and when I can find my things, I feel like I can breathe. But if everything's always missing mm-hmm. because there's someone mm-hmm. else borrowing your stuff all the time, that drives me crazy. That's true. She, I went on a re- retreat this weekend mm-hmm. to like a weird Burning Man kind of bizarro party one of the weirdest parties i've ever been to in my life yes i had no problem with moshe going on a three-day vacation you complained about right. it constantly <laughs> and asked me why are you doing that are you trying to be young what's wrong with well, you well i don't understand why he wanted to go oh. to reno for three nights and stay in a hotel versus like hang out with our our cute family yeah at, at any rate i needed to borrow her tote bag and i she texted me i would say a minimum of eight time checking in on the tote bag <laughs> <laughs> no i just was like just because check- were you just checking in on the level of chaos that the tote bag right. was? Which, by the way, it was the only bag. It's my beautiful tote bag. It's it was be- the only bag. It's a beautiful bag. one. It's a special it's one. It's just really you know what it is? It's big pure, and easy. It's pangolin skin. It's, right. like, it's really soft. But Moshe, it's the only thing that his DJ set would fit in. Sure, of course. <laughs> right? Thank you, Well, Nick. so you need it. If he's going to DJ in Reno, no less, <laughs> he needs the right <laughs> carrying kit. Ca- right. By the way, you kept saying tote bag, and I was picturing like a weird, like a, a, a independent bookstore tote bag no it's almost like a suitcase tote bag yeah no i'm getting a vision for it now are you are you on my side at all in terms of your stuff i i'm i am i am in always my uh my wife is does like is not great with headphones like loses a lot of headphones that's a specific thing so i do get frustrated when she loses my headphones uh so i get that um i mean what's interesting is that Moshe's framing your problem as a clearly. <laughs> that, okay, that we're that moving is, on. Do we have a call to actually go is, to right now? That is shit. Nick, it's, it's been like awesome chaos. to have you. <laughs> that is just been chaos. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's like, she won't let me borrow stuff because I'm chaos, right? So, <laughs> that's kind of her weakness, is that she doesn't want me to go lose her stuff in Reno. Yeah. That's kind of her, her main character flaw. <laughs> right, like that bag doesn't deserve to go to Reno, being like held by, you know, your oh my God. turntable by the way, how, in it. How how did, did the t- tote bag make it back okay tote bag made it back just fine <laughs> how was the dj set well to be honest with you they it wouldn't was, let you DJ. it was at the last second that i was staring at my dj console thing and i was like should i bring this and i texted my friend do you think i should bring this and then 
he's like, definitely, we'll find a way to use it. And oh, and yeah. so I brought it, and then it just was stayed it in the an hotel outdoor room. event or was it? No, in- it was at a hotel. Uh huh. Yeah, and it was very bizarre. I'm, I think I'm I so- told him I was like, is this a sex party? It's like three floors of a hotel for three days. Yeah. I'll tell you. You want to hear the? Yeah, weird- but it was in Reno. You want to hear the weirdest thing that happened? <laughs> yes. The weirdest thing that I saw this weekend, Natasha, you're going to hardcore check out, was there was a, um, and I'm not even sure. A if- Jewish parody Burning Man. <laughs> I saw Country Yussi Burning and the Stiebel Hopper uh, smoking uh, DMT. In a, no, um, it was this, like, you walk into this room and it's a hotel room that had been completely redone in order to, uh, it looked like an evangelical church. And it was uh, lit like an evangelical church. And there was, you're going to hate this so much. There was a preacher and he started preaching. This is the room of the hotel? In a room in a hotel that had been transformed. Every That was kind of the whole theme of this thing was that all the rooms have been totally transformed. It was bizarre. I mean, it was like, it, it, I, I Was it like dorks? No, I wouldn't say, it was like, it was like burners. <laughs> like, right. no, no dorks. No there. dorks. <laughs> Nick, what you a don't question, have a leg though. To... Like, I'm like, we're like in men in our 40s. We're like, were there fucking doors here? No, although we did walk by, it, we did walk by a hotel worker because there was a lot of people there. Yeah. We walked by a hotel worker talking to another hotel worker talking about the, the people there. And sure. she goes, these, some of these people dress like this in their regular lives. This is who they really are. She was like trying to break down who was there. Sure, sure. So it was like hardcore burner, old school okay. burner types. And, and, and each room was like an experience. It was like a... Yes. Like a church but instead of about god it's about fucking kindness well actually it's about it was about piss it was about so piss. they it slowly was a they slowly revealed as this as this sermon went on it was like a southern baptist preaching thing right that uh that it was about that he was preaching about pee and he was like you know our golden nectar you know it comes out of our urethra but it lives in our heart and then the, he would have an entourage that would go drip drip and then the whole audience would go drip drip it was fun and then they started singing a song about piss and it was beautiful like a beautifully sung song uh-huh. but about piss it all culminated, Natasha, you're going to love it. It all culminated in them opening up these doors and a couple walking in. Oh, wow. Stripping naked. Sure. And then they, they, they grabbed two vel- black velvet um, sort of rugs and, and tossed them off. And you realize there were two golden toilets in this room. Sure. And they undressed. They sat on the toilet. They held hands, this couple, and they did a marriage ceremony. And they peed. Uh-huh. In real time, in the tube, there was a hydraulic tube that filled up a <laughs> transparent uh, plastic heart with pee. And that was the end of the, that was the culmination of the ceremony. Wouldn't you rather be watching The Vow with your partner? <laughs> I can do that every other like Eating every other Indian weekend. food, like. I loved it. By the way, like that was my favorite. By the way, just to be clear, one of the people peeing was the guy from. Oh, it was Keith Ranieri for sure. I swear to God, Nick. He, this see, is, that's like, that's who would go to you something wanna, like yes. that. No, every fourth guy, I was like, is that Keith, Keith right. I'm not even kidding. I was like, so, that looks so like Keith So it wasn't filled with doors. No, it okay, was cool. Go. It was actually filled with the smartest men on earth yeah. with the highest <laughs> recorded IQs. Would you go back next year, Moshe? I would go back next year. It was, oh, it was cool. Damn it. it was fun. It was really fun. It reminded me- I need me, to act like Burning Man's a bigger deal so you don't like go to other versions of it throughout the year. You're, you don't have an we ally here. We need you at home, honey. Nick, Nick, Nick and I burned together. We need you at home. Nick and I were at Burning Man We together. did go to Burning Man, but I got to tell you, Moshe, we need you at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. If we all live together, that'd be so fun. Uh, I want to live with like six couples and just like once a week, make the dinner. I love that this party in <laughs> and pop- then like everyone could like, we, yeah. it would, it would, it would be like on a, a like a lot of acres. I love yeah, that this yeah. th- that this burner party We're, in you're basically pitching next year. Well, that's what I was saying. <laughs> this burner party in Reno Tahoe was a little too much for her to bear, but she's now pitching a poly uh, com- comedy poly community, which is mainly all about dinner preparation. <laughs> <laughs> well, we already all know each other, so we know no one's a crazy person. Yeah. And then it's you the just house like of the tote bag. There's a room like... with just tote bags everywhere. The unlimited high quality tote bags. Well, it's hard. Like our nanny canceled, so we have to like. Now we're all scrambling like there's no help. You but know, I, it's I, like when everyone has like a small family of three, it's like someone has to yeah, make dinner yeah, every night. Yeah, there's yeah. there's no one to like, I don't know. It's or so you're like, I'm going to do something tonight. Like you, you're, yeah, your partner has to be home. Yeah. For the rest of your life, like for 18 years, you know, you have to like, someone's got to be watching. We're letting thing. the kiddo go at 12. <laughs> We're you're gonna, you're gonna, gonna give him the, the tools, uh-huh. and then after that, it's on him. You know, it's funny you say that because I was talking to my friend this weekend who Kanye West. He's Kanye West, and about like <laughs> just what he thought of the Jews and stuff. No, but he is a drug person. 
like big time, mm. but he also has a 10 year old. And I was like, what are How you, do you do it? What are you going to do? I don't know what to do because mm-hmm. I'm in the middle and Natasha's, I think a little bit more sort of traditional than me, but this guy does currently does cocaine. And I'm like, what are you going to do when you're, when your child is like, I do drugs and it's not just like I smoke pot. Like, what are you going to do? Can, can, is he someone who can handle his cocaine? <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. How, I are you say, assuming that his kids are going to be on drugs because 100%, he is? 100%, yes. Wait, yes. why? Because I said, How, how's your son? And he said, oh, he started a band. And I was like, okay, so when he starts doing drugs, yeah, I mean, it's it's over for that guy. Have you ever thought about that? What I mean, you- I think about it because I've had, for years, I've had nieces and nephews. For years. Mm. Uh, so I've always, like, when I've talked about any sort of usage I've done, like, I am slightly aware of, like, oh, like, my 13, 14, 15, however old like niece or nephew, which would then eventually translate to my kids, would will be able. There'll be a record of whatever I've said. Mm. So I, I sort of, but I have to. I don't know. So, That's so interesting. That's really cool. What that, that you got a little practice. I got a little practice with like, what am I going to say? You it, know, it, it kind of set you up because you. I believe the bit about the your ne- nephew coming in and going like getting ready for bed. Yes. That you started doing that before you had oh, a child, well, right? Before I had a child. I haven't been able to stop thinking about that bit since I first saw you tell it because it's so exactly it's so applicable once you have a child. Like it, I think it was just years of my having like I have 12 nieces and nephews. So for years I was just watching like kids get get served dinner and then go go to bed. And weirdly my kid isn't even of that age yet. So right. like I I yeah, but I but I'd seen enough of it. I'd the, seen enough of it. the premise is what the, the the children everything every decision they do is because they're basically powerless and so they they throw yeah. everything they do is to like gain yeah. the smallest nugget of power. I think yeah I kind of actually I f- took that part out. <laughs> That's the part the that really stuck with me. Uh, well it it's it was it was in, I mean I found it interesting it was like because the joke was that they were like little terrorists that they had no control so it was like constant like like ieds wherever they could right just of like minor acts of rebellion i don't know why i took that part out that might have just been like fucking i forgot you know what i mean like the pandemic happened and like you had bits and then you oh, like brought them back in a You're thousand like too percent. lazy to like listen to them again to remember exactly how it goes okay i have a question for you nick before we take a, take a call mm-hmm. is is do you feel like you're the same person before the pandemic I mean, I got I got married, had a ch- and had a child during the pandemic. So and you gave birth to a great Netflix special. And I gave birth to a great Netflix special, but it was um, induced. So <laughs> oh, you did a C section. <laughs> I didn't say that. Okay. I was induced though. Um, I so uh, but I generally do. Do you do you guys feel different? Well, I'm thinking I'm more lazy now. You're more lazy now. I think so. I I think that I feel that way too. Interesting. Well, like because you're like, oh, resetting. Like, like what were we fucking hustling so hard for? It, is that what? If is I that- should, if that for sure. Yeah. And I think having a child in a way, it, I know a lot of parents have the opposite reaction, which is like, I got to get out there and make money so that my child will thrive. Yeah. But I f- sort of felt the opposite, which is just like, oh, none of this m- motivation, right. none of this striving for attention yes. means anything. Sure, sure. It's all about this, this person. But I was good. Yeah. I wanted to say something about that, about laziness, <clears throat> just to be vulnerable. I think part of the reason I went to the Tahoe party uh-huh. is because I so didn't want to, mm. and I was trying to force my body right. to be like, no, I'm not a person that now just stays home and watches Nexium mm-hmm. for the rest of my life. Yeah. I will go. <laughs> I want to fr- join it. Yeah, I want. Uh- <laughs> kind of. I just want to. <laughs> And but, slowly earn their respect and make my way up inside of their thing. I admire that, Moshe. I just wanted to force myself to get into sure, an experience. Sure, it's sure. like it's like exercise. It's like anything, yeah. you know. So that's good for you. But I think I would say that I am the same person, uh, but my life has changed dramatically. And also, I've now been with my partner with Lily for like another two years, like twice as long. So there's a lot of elements about me that have changed. But I don't think the pandemic itself drastically changed me Mm. um because you also didn't have your kid during the pandemic we did we had our we had him at the height of the we had him in the when la was the epicenter of the world like there was a morgue in the parking lot when when 
when we had our when Lily had our son. Whoa! So oh, in the parking lot of the hospital of that the you hospital. gave birth. Hospital, yeah. <laughs> it was fucking fuck like nobody was allowed in, and I was like, at one point, I left to go heat up some miso soup in like a employee like microwave and it felt like i was walking into like saw oh my god do you know what i mean (laughs) yeah like it just was like using a microwave a a public microwave felt crazy in that time it was and was we were in a hospital right and and half of the hospital was just i mean it was it was a truly wild experience so but no i don't i i kind of uh it's so interesting i don't know I don't know what I was going to say. I'm gonna well, it. also, I think that like middle, like some kids had it really rough, like, you know, middle school, like there are people who didn't have middle school. Like oh. my whole personality was shaped from middle school. Yes. Imagine you just missed it. My whole financial income is based on middle school. <laughs> no, but like, what if Big Mouth was just about a guy on Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's proof that it's an mask. important oh, part, you know. Bummer. I'm yeah. just saying. Oh, like, for sure. And also, you guys, you guys went through it with a, a child who was like a functional human inside of it. Our son was born into it and was not. We were not sharing him. He was not in the world until the vaccine like we it started to open up i will say though the most damaged people from the pandemic are like middle schoolers and mothers i heard yeah so maybe like you hear that in the same approved (laughs) article that talked about the lab leak Mm -hmm. this one was approved as well (laughs) yeah anyway i meant approved emotion approved um emotion approved i do think it's interesting how we're we're in our 40s and I'm still ruled, and you are too, still ruled by those three years of middle school. It's so bizarre. And They're so massive. much of who I am is a reaction to the person that I was then. So much of my narrative about myself was set in stone in those. I mean, it's. Yeah. W- I remember a girl sitting in seventh grade on the bus, and I was all dressed up in these like esprit matching jumpsuit. And I was sitting next to this girl, and she was really like cool. And I was listening to the radio, and she was like, you know, you don't have to listen to the radio. And then she like she played me the Smiths on her Walkman. Whoa. And I was like, cool. And like literally from like the next day, I was like, oh, I'm someone else now. Wow. Like it really. No more Esprit. No it, more. I, yeah. Like no more. It was like black. kind of this cutesy look. And like I was just like, oh, I'm going to start looking for music. Like, I'm not going to like. But I'm, I'm not just going to listen to the fucking radio. <laughs> well, but it was it's like, like you no, went from being a kid to being like a young woman in one cool. second. It's so many stories I feel like about that time are like kind of traumatic. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was like someone like like directed you towards you're like, oh, much more. Are you happy? Were you happy with that? Totally. And yeah. sometimes when I find people who aren't cool, I'm like, they never had someone sit next to them on the yeah. bus and tell them they never had a cool friend and maybe like are a cool sibling or someone. By the way, just and we're never going to take this caller. Jack, <laughs> Atlanta, just so we're clear, we're never going to take it um, is I heard saw that Morrissey was I, I was performing at the Greek last night and after a half hour stopped the show and walked off and they said and and then it, it was became clear that it was because he said it was too cold. <laughs> <laughs> it was like fifties. It was fifties in LA. Why does anyone buy a ticket to see Morrissey ever? He's proven himself. His Dude, track record is proven. I've just, seen him so many times. He does thirty nine minute shows. Perfect. There's so- <laughs> by the way, genuinely perfect. Yeah. Well done, Morrissey. He's a vegan there's just like no he's energy weak. he's for weak more. <laughs> i need iron if you want me to continue <laughs> all right let's do a call okay, okay we're gonna call jack in atlanta hey tosh yeah Mosh. you know what after my trip to the rave this weekend i might need to go see a certain kind of doctor if you know what i mean you have any suggestions on how i could get a very easy and very quick appointment uh yeah maybe Zocdoc. absolutely for the rave dads that went out there and made some mistakes over the weekend <laughs> Find a doctor on ZocDoc. It's a free app that shows you doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them. With ZocDoc, you can find the right doctor for you in your network and in your neighborhood. With ZocDoc, booking an appointment with a doctor that suits your needs, fits your schedule, and is in your network, in your neighborhood, is easy. On ZocDoc, you can find a specialist for whatever you need, whether you're trying to straighten your teeth, fix a bad back, get that mole checked out, or anything else, ZocDoc has you covered. I know I've said this before, but I use this product and I used it before they became advertisers on this show. There's nothing more frustrating than Googling a doctor in the specialty that you need, calling that doctor and then being like, yeah, I can see you next February. On ZocDoc, you look up all the doctors in your area and when their appointments are, you can make an appointment sometimes the same day. And you can read the reviews. It's awesome. I use it. You should use it. 
finding a doctor in your neighborhood. I mean, it's um, and who takes your insurance? It's an amazing app. ZocDoc's mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with a few taps. This thing has saved me. Okay, go to ZocDoc.com slash honeymoon. Download that ZocDoc app for free, and you can start your search for a top-rated doctor today. And a lot are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash honeymoon. ZocDoc dot com slash honeymoon. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You seem like you need to chill out a little bit, but okay. not so much that you become totally intoxicated and checked out of our family. <laughs> and I would like to recommend to you a dad grass. I love dad grass. You might have heard about dad grass CBD joints. They got flour and tinctures. It's 100% organic hemp to chill you out, but it doesn't get you stoned out. Dad grass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. But it doesn't get you like super high because they're very low in THC and they're high in CBD. So you can enjoy those CBD effects while keeping a clear head. And now they offer a variety of products so you can toke or dose just the way you like. From their CBD tincture drops to the newly launched CBD gummies and flavors like classic blackberry ginger, mm. good time hibiscus lime, Yum. nighttime midnight berry. I you like can it. chill out without getting too stoned. All Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. So right now, Dadgrass is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash honeymoon. Whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Dadgrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. That's dadgrass.com slash honeymoon. Dadgrass.com slash honeymoon for 20% off your first order. Go to dadgrass.com slash honeymoon for 20% off your first order. Jack in Atlanta. Jack. It's Jack from Atlanta. Jack, 92.3 Atlanta. Hey, Jack, it's Natasha Legero, Moshe Kasher, and our friend Nick Kroll. Hey, how y'all doing? Good. You have a very deep voice. <laughs> yes, I do. Wow. I got yeah. it. We were wondering, about, you're kind of, these men are obviously intimidated by you. So uh, just talk to me, honey. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> uh,. Well, I guess long and short of it is, um, <laughs> you, you can't yeah. be serious, dude. This has got to be no. a bit, right? Can is I, everything a cartoon no. filter? Before, before you, sorry, can we get, just before we get in, I'm, I know the long and short of it. I know, but hold on. Is did when you because we were just talking about puberty and go in middle school? Did your did you oh did your voice change and go like way deep? Like did it? Yeah, like, when you were seven and you first hit puberty. <laughs> did, <laughs> Yo, you're actually not that far off. It was uh, nine. Whoa. Wow. And did your voice go like deep right away? No, it was like for a while, it was this thing I could like make it do. And then after a while, it's like it almost stuck. Just as I got older, it kind of kept becoming more and more just like this. Just I used to. Uh huh. So this is what you're saying. This is a a put on voice that you've taken to. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly. what. Yeah. That is not a voice that I want to say no to. Oh, correct. Oh, is that why you did it? So women would stop saying no at nine? <laughs> I'm sick and tired. I just of wanted girls. to impress Nick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. I'm okay, here for Okay, this is awesome. You all, know, right. all right, go ahead. Long What's the long and short, short of it? Of it? Okay. Long and short of it is um, I'm a mid-20s guy. I don't have any social media or dating apps. So I'm kind of struggling a little bit with dating. Um, and that's mostly because my women friends have kind of had this unanimous verdict that it's not really the done thing anymore to uh you know approach strangers at bars and parties and i kind of get that because it always seemed weird to me that you would kind of just interrupt a stranger's night for the purpose sure. of hitting on them yeah so um so yeah but i also know that a lot of my friends have met their partners through dating apps so it kind of seems like i'm not really equipped for um you know, without social media and without dating apps, I feel like almost unequipped for modern dating. So I wanted to ask, uh, you know, what are some ways that I could maybe adjust my life or like, you know, the social infrastructure in mm. my life to maybe a little more reliably meet uh, possibly eligible people my age? Have you thought about talking to literally any woman with that <laughs> voice? Because no one will ever <laughs> deny you. Um, I'm aroused. Can I <laughs> can I make a suggestion that you get on social media and dating apps? <laughs> right. What, what, yeah. What's the problem there? <laughs> He's no. like trying to dangle the question over here. It's like, but wait, what about the glaring issue part? <laughs> um, but right. I, I get I get um, social media um, not being on it. Um, dating. I mean, I met my wife on a dating app uh, and called Grinder. <laughs> and um, uh, boy, was I surprised. 
And, um, but no, so I, I, it was great for me. It was, I found it to be like weirdly, it, it was able to connect me to someone I never would have met in real life because for slightly different reasons, cause I'm, uh, famous, uh, <laughs> <laughs> bars are weird. Like, like I, I, I being socially meeting people started to feel like hard, even, you know what I mean? Even though I felt like, oh, I can figure out how to have a conversation. It was, it, it had become trickier. And so dating apps allowed me to like curate a little more and, and actually go on dates with people that I was like, oh, I might actually be interested in this person versus like the kind of roulette of being at a bar and being like, they're kind of hot or they're talking to me, or, you know? Or worse, like a, a Hollywood party or something. Yeah, exactly. And like, as Nick, what Nick's talking about makes sense. Like he, I'm sure at a certain point when you get to a, a level of fame, you probably have to worry. Maybe not. I, I just like, th does she like me for me or does she like me for who she thinks? Is that your, is, are similar, you going through that as well? Well, no, I was going to say <laughs> similar that. for you on a, on a, on a dating app, you would know that they like you for you and not the voice because they wouldn't <laughs> have heard it yet. They would just have seen you, you know, it wouldn't be about that dulcet tone. What is, can I ask a question? What is it that you're, I get social media entirely. Is there a reason you're not on dating apps? Um, I, so I'm just unfortunately bad at dating apps. I have a really hard time holding a text conversation with a complete stranger. Mm -hmm. um, that just is not something I really yeah. seem to be able okay. to do. I can help with that. One thing that women really like on, on those apps is after the first two interactions, hey, how are you? I'm Jack. She says, hi, how are you? I'm Sarah or whatever. Send next thing, that. next thing, you could say, that's a, a, a send that dick. They'll love that. <laughs> or if you're not ready to send the dick, you just say, let's cut to the chase and meet in person right now. Yeah. And all women will respond positively to that. I'm and, making a joke, Jack. You look like you're taking me seriously. And okay. I will show you just, if, I would just add on to motion today and I'll, and I'll bring that, I will be, I'll bring that dick with me. No, tell him, actually <laughs> tell him, I was the, thinking about sending you a picture of my dick, but, no. but I know. that's seems too forward yeah. let's meet at coffee right now and then i'll bring i'll bring it well i'm trying to figure out <laughs> it sorry go ahead what if he put on his social what if you just joined one app because you have to this is what you can't just deny how everyone's meeting people mm -hmm. you know like i'm sure that's not your first choice was to get on a dating app right no, like it, no it was to go hot water ballooning <laughs> Hot water ballooning. They're ballooning. <laughs> that's something totally new. See, Jack, you don't know about that. I thought that's a, that's that where you get you go to a place that pit, yeah, everybody pisses in water balloons. <laughs> then, Sign me up. That's my exact like kind of the, party. It's the new axe throwing bar thing. It's hot. It's called hot water ballooning. No, here's my question. Were you really going to say what it was? No, go ahead, okay. please. Well, could he put on a dating app that what he just said? Listen, I'm really bad at text conversations. I'm a this kind of guy. You know, would love to take your. I, I don't know. Is it me for coffee? Or, or is there a way to phrase it so he doesn't seem psycho? And that mm -hmm. to yeah, I mean, have you yeah, have you tried that or anything like that with someone? No, but I've kind of considered it because a lot of my friends have told me that, you know, like a lot of women are going to be like FBI agents. They want to vet you a little bit, um, mm -hmm. you know, what? before any date or anything like that. And so they've told me Were that you there a lot on of January girls. 6th? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I just I just realized something, though, because a lot of girls tell me that that's all guys want to do is just go back and forth and back and forth. And right. they're all weighing their options, trying to see what hottest girl will respond to them. So maybe yeah. a, like a sincere mm -hmm. sentence, like I'm not really interested in going back and forth on text. If you know, if we here's, meet, I, I agree with what you're saying. But here's what I would say is like when I was on it and, and talking to people, it is true. I feel like women are always talking about dating apps, how men do not engage and actually like pull the trigger on hangs. And I think that's part of a larger thing, which are people are genuinely scared of each other and scared of actual interaction. And there's something safer about this, like nonsense fucking volleying that we do. But I would also say that um, people, when I was on it, you would see people being like, I don't like drama. If you're here to just chat, like they're like, you don't want to be the person who's like coming at it with this sort of like the negative, negative version yeah. of it. Yeah, it's for like, sure. So it's a little more of the like, but I get it. People, the as you said, the women are all the FBI, and they're trying to take us all down. And I know that that's Jack exactly what you said. Absolutely, and the <laughs> FBI has been totally corrupted by the kind of liberal swamp. Yeah, I think see, you were exactly. saying that, right? So clean the swamp, right? Yeah. I mean, you're saying 
drain the swamp. Drain right? the swamp. <laughs> We're all agreeing. Which is also what I write uh, to uh, women on dating apps. Well, I want to uh, drain that swamp. It's, it's this- actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's actually the app I was going to suggest is drain the swamp. Yeah. And it's a double entendre. Yeah. yeah. Come on, he needs help. Okay, okay. all right. All right. Jack. So here's what I would say. Can I, if I may, just having may. more recently been on apps, unless you, I actually no, I'm, no. On, I'm on apps. We, on all we apps. were never on apps, yeah. and we, we dated saying. in the olden days. I'm I'm on app. I'm on. Can you keep a secret? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just joined Ashley Madison. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> that's crazy because I just invested heavily in crypto this oh, week. Great. So well, I'm excited. So we're both doing. We're both having a heck of a week. So um, I would say I, I like what the original phrasing, which was like, "Hey, I'm really not great at this texting back and forth. Like, I, I'd love to, you know, like." Almost what you're saying, which is like women do want to have some sense that you're not a f- psycho, so they need to have a little more back and forth than like meeting you after like one quick correspondence. <laughs> That's true. So right. they need a little, but but I think because I also weirdly am not great at texts in general. Like I don't feel like my funniest. I don't feel like I've got it. Like I don't feel charming uh, over in that way in, as I do in person. So I think you can just sort of be very forward about that being like hey i'm not great at this like i'd love to get to know you a little bit and then let's fucking meet up and <laughs> and drain the swamp and drain the drain the pangolin together yeah the, but I, you know what i mean you let me use this pangolin to drain that swamp i, I and 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 just to, just making a commitment to yourself like just join one app work on your profile have it say something like that and just try it you know and and simultaneously don't close yourself off to in person things you know you should definitely go to concerts that are happening in the area or anything social that's happening that's an yeah. interest of yours the holidays are coming sure. there's going to be things so so you just if, if you seem like you're it's so sweet but you really seem like you're in a place to meet someone and holidays and are coming up and every caroling group needs a bass right now it needs a baritone <laughs> So you're kind of in the zone, you know. Are you? Yeah, do you do, do you do market. activities? Do you do you, do you like do like good, the, stuff like? Uh, this is good. This is Charlie Rose type of <laughs> stuff right here. <laughs> do you do you do activities? Uh, <laughs> By the way, I guess you can't see me. I'm wearing a robe like Charlie Rose. <laughs> no, but I, yeah. What are you into? Um, you know, I try to do some, a uh, few social things, you know, every week, you know, it is a lot of like going out to bars with people my age. Um, but I also try to always just do a lot of volunteering, you know, way to keep busy. And volunteering just, you know, seems people. like the perfect kind of thing. Cause like, I agree with you and to like going to a bar and chatting up a person directly, it just feels so creepy. And like it, it the, the, the odds, no of it one work, wants that right now. The odds of it working just feels so ridiculously small, but I would say if, if you're trying to do something analog, Yes, things like volunteering, things like community things where you will actually part of the experience is meeting the people that you're around mm-hmm. is super good because then organic conversations can happen. I was going to addend, addendum, amend. Mm-hmm. I was going to add on to what Nick and Natasha were saying. I think make the best dating, get on one app, make the best dating profile you can. Don't say in it, I'm bad at this. When you start, te- this is my, 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 my thought. When you start texting with these women, early in the interaction say hey i just want to say out loud i'm just not great at back and forth texting after you've talked a little bit yeah, yeah so yeah. if this gets you know whatever i just want to be vulnerable or you don't say the word vulnerable but be vulnerable because it's very difficult to be vulnerable in a digital interface and i think that's got well be- i had that i had what when my wife when we met we matched on like new year's eve and she Aww. was like do you have any new year's resolutions and I, my initial response was like to be better at talking to girls on you know fucking apps sure uh-huh and got like no no response oh, that's a that's a deathly silence and then it? i was like 10 minutes later was like actually it's to be on my phone less and read more <laughs> i come and back she forced you to be vulnerable she fo- she, I, and as soon as i became vulnerable then she was like oh really like what books are you reading or and i'm like this and then we and that was it like it it really so i, I it was when you were more when i was more honest and vulnerable it was much mm. more effective at actually you know achieving something uh, real. Yeah, because I think you're right, Jack. You're on to something and everybody's aware of it. I'm sure even Nick, you met your wife on, on an app. We all are cognizant of the fact that it's an it's a bizarre interface to create incredibly significant emotional yeah. uh, connections. It's not the, the perfect system, but all that matters is the result. All, at this point, like, like once 
you're past the part where you meet and you fall for someone. None of that other stuff matters. I mean, it's rare that you're going to find a connection like Moshe and Natasha where Natasha bought Moshe from mm-hmm. a Yiddish website. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's the most Jewish name? Yeah. Song what's parody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jack, would you be willing to try? Oh, it's for, it's, it, the website is for everybody. <laughs> it's called OYOL. <laughs> OYOL. <laughs> Here's the real question. It's ASL. It's age, sex, Litvak? Here's the real question. Yes. That me and... I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Jack. Jack, That's Jack. Jack, Jack honey. Jack from Atlanta. We want to know... When do we do we have to give in to technology? Do we? Because I don't want to either. But and Jack I feel doesn't like- want to. But what I'm I think what I'm saying is technology is a tool, and right now it's the tool that you need. Well, Natasha, how are you then? How are you having your affairs? Yeah, that is a great question. <laughs> is it over? If it's not through technology, is it? It's callers to the podcast. <laughs> Lonely <laughs> callers to if the podcast. If I were going to have an affair, I would think it would be way better to have it not be. Through not have tech. a digital trail. No paper trail. No trail. No mm. trail. Let's let's hike to a park or hike you know, to meet a up at a river. <laughs> Why is it all in nature? Why? Because not? you're or like you know yeah. go to a cemetery. Yeah, well, fucking a cemetery. Okay. <laughs> well, because Sacrifice it's, season. Oh so wait, now Jack, I think I figured <laughs> okay, out why Jack. you're single. <laughs> okay, it took a little while, Did but you we say got to the. He said it, he said, he said it is sacrifice he season. It was <laughs> sacrifice season. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I feel I bad for really trying to help. Him. I don't no. really like back and forth texting. I like to get straight to the bloodletting. <laughs> Is that possible? <laughs> um, what about work? What do you do? What What about work? Is there anybody that's that's the right place to <laughs> try to fuck somebody? Right? Yeah. It's classic. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. In in our contemporary God, time, things really have changed. Um, but I do think you don't have to do apps at all. But I do think. The, the upside to them is that they can be, if you use them responsibly, they can be intentional and really useful and if and targeted in a good way. Yeah, I totally agree. But I also think if you're like, what, what kind of stuff do you volunteer for? What are you doing volunteer work? Blood sacrifice season <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. I do a lot with um, my, uh, the Atlantic Humane Society and a uh, shelter for uh, displaced women you ain't mean, kids. I would you think. Are not, <laughs> you're not meeting fucking I would think. girls at the dog pound dog? <laughs> that does seem like, yeah. That, that sounds like primo. The, how do you meet the hottest girls who do photography in a city? <laughs> you fucking, you goddamn go work at the Humane Society. The main problem is that women aren't really into the humane treatment of animals yeah. mostly. That's kind of, <laughs> yeah. Just, have you ever met a, a girl in, in one of the volunteer situations you've been in? Or have you ever even thought about that? No, nah, it just, it always seemed a little like work almost like. Sure. I don't, I think, I no, I think that is a fucking I think perfect. women who are going to adopt a dog want to be hit on at, at the, at the, exactly. at the shelter. But also, well, no, <laughs> no, I mean, I mean the other people that work there. Oh, you're saying you don't want to like be like, would you like this beagle or also. Yeah. I mean, a, can I ask though, have you tried fucking a dog? That's a great, <laughs> gr- absolutely great question, Nick. I've and, talked on television about what dogs i would fuck <laughs> wait hold on would you fuck this dog <laughs> no that's cutie Stop. pablo's upstairs trying to get over his trauma well of listen being on the i think we helped you I, you know you just got to do it it depends on how important it is to you if it's really important to you you got to you think i want to get on tiktok no, but I'm doing it. You <laughs> that's know? how that's she how fucking she's gonna find her <laughs> That's how I meet. There's dudes. a 12 year old Chinese influencer that Natasha is very close to meeting at a gra- at a graveyard or a river <laughs> or on a hike. <laughs> Just give in a little bit to it. Make your make your uh, profile very you. Say how tall you are. Have a big big pic, like a lot of good pics. Can I got you, a can deep you voice. Put, can you put that voice on? Can you put that voice up on there? It, find the app. You can you, do it on Hinge. Yeah. Find go. the app and 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 some. It, Say click here to hear the deepest voice you've ever heard. It's mine. <laughs> do and hinge. Then- no, just do hinge. If hinge has voice, do it, honey. Yeah, get yeah. It. That's your superpower. The, the, All right. Okay, here's our, our advice. Get get on hinge, work on the best profile you can, be vulnerable in that text and say this I get uncomfortable in these situations. Mm-hmm. I just want you to know. I'd love you know, be vulnerable. And then v- volu- think of your volunteer thing to answer your <laughs> actual question. Think of your volunteer thing. To me, that's like the perfect 
real world place to meet people is in a volunteer situation because you are uh, you are there with a common interest. The yeah. other people that volunteer with you, things like that where community is based around it is a But also don't when you're there don't be a fucking creep. Don't be a creep, <laughs> but that goes even on hinge, don't I'd be a say creep. Almost across the board. Yeah. Don't be, a creep. don't be a creep. There's actually only one time. But also, it's weird. It yeah. There's only one time when it's actually appropriate to be a creep. Yeah. And that is sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, honey. Good yeah. luck, Jack. Bye. bye, Jack. You're sweet and handsome. Uh, you're gonna, and he's you're gonna be fine. He's. Like, I didn't like when he said sacrifice season. You didn't. I, I love it. Made it made me think like. He's oh, a he's doing a. He, he was doing a bit. I think so, but that's the thing. That's so like. See, I'm out. See, but this okay. <laughs> But that's what I'm right. So like if that conversation was like a texting, your text, he's sweet. He seems funny. Da, 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 or he's like, he's nice. And then you try to do one joke and you're like, sacrifice. He's <laughs> and you're like, he's like, no, nah, I'm not. No. But, and you're, that's t- you're right. so right. On, and it might have had more nuance in person. No, but on text, uh, on, yeah. on dating apps, especially every word you, and I'm sure this is what's happening for Jack. I wish we had said this when he was on. He's going to listen to that. Because. Already. Every word that you say is being weighed in a different way than conversations used to be because there's a person on the other end of the phone going, is this person a match for me or not? Yeah. So every sentence that comes through, when you did your bit, whether Lily was thinking that or not, I'm sure you've had the conversation since, It does to your mind, you're like, shit, I said the exact wrong thing when I did the bit about being better at talking yes. to girls. It's over. Okay, I got it. Like, that I can. That's pressure, and a guy like Jack. I mean, Nick, you're a clever, and you got game, and blah blah blah. I'm sure for uh, people that aren't as comfortable in those situations, it's fucking harrowing. But even that, like, I don't. I, I never feel that. Um, I, I I genuinely don't feel like for whatever reason the interface of phone texting. I like almost never feel funny mm-hmm. uh, over in that medium. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Tosh. Yamosh. Yeah, I would like to tell our listeners about an unbelievably unique gift that I think would be very special for the holidays. And what's that now? It's called StoryWorth. And it's all about collecting the story of your family and turning it into a keepsake memento. Every week, StoryWorth will email your loved one a single life-related question that you can pick from their collection. Like, what's the bravest thing you've ever done? What's the farthest you've traveled? And all they have to do is reply with a story. Then after a year... StoryWorth compiles your loved one's stories, memories, and even any photos into an exquisite hardcover book, creating a valued keepsake. It's actually a really cool idea because there's all these stories and these memories that everybody has. And when you lose a loved one, you start to go, I wish I knew more about them. I wish I knew who they really were. Well, with StoryWorth, you can collect them right now and you can read them together. Millions of stories have already been told with StoryWorth because they make the process so simple. And you can get started with your loved ones for the holidays. And before you know it, You'll both be cherishing those timeless stories for generations to come. This is like my mom's dream. Yeah, this is like it's everybody's such mom's a dream. dream for a parent. So help your family share their story this holiday season with StoryWorth. Go to storyworth.com slash honeymoon today and save $10 on your first purchase. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash honeymoon. Save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash honeymoon. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. Health is wealth is something that I've always said. And there is no greater way to become wealthy and healthy than to know what's happening in your body, which is why I want to tell everybody about Everly Well. This year, you can prioritize what matters most when you share the gift of health from Everly Well. Choose from at-home lab tests like food sensitivity, women's health, or men's health, or vitamins and supplements because love and health are all you need. Basically, you take one of these tests. They tell you where you're deficient, what kind of vitamins you need, what it is that you need to exist at your optimum level. And then they can even send you those vitamins and supplements directly to your door. It's a digital healthcare designed for you with personalized results and accessible tools for long-term health. With over 30 at-home lab tests and high-quality vitamins and supplements, you'll be able to find the perfect test for you or your loved ones. Everly Well ships products straight to you or your loved one with everything needed in one package. Mosh, when we started dating, you always wanted me to help you stay healthy Absolutely. and like give you the right vitamins and help you rem- remind you because mm-hmm. you forget that kind of thing. So I think this is such a great gift to give your partner too. It's also knowing, in my experience, having taken this test, knowing the places that you're deficient helps you become more disciplined about taking those things. And kn- also making better choices in your life. I knew I was low on vitamin D. I knew I was low on potassium. And that helped me start to take those things. And they said it to, they just couldn't make it easier. So basically, just do it. 
Go to everlywell.com slash honeymoon for 20% off your next at-home lab test. For listeners of the show, Everly Well is offering a discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash honeymoon. That's everlywell.com slash honeymoon for 20% off your next at-home lab test. E-V-E-R-L-Y-W-E-L-L dot com slash honeymoon. Okay, let's call Taryn and Doug, who are right here in Los Angeles. The Valley. The Valley. I mean, when someone writes The Valley, you have to say it. It's funny, because when you watch Valley Girl, you're like, oh, that's like a stereotype that Mm -hmm. doesn't exist No, they died. Everything's gone. There's only the internet. (laughs) All that's left is the internet. These two do look like they live in the Valley, though. Hey, it's like a... Taryn, Doug. Hey, guys. Taryn, Doug. From hey, the Valley. Hey. How's it going? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get it, girl. Uh, we're here with Nick Kroll. And of course, it's me and Natasha. How are you guys? We are great. Excellent. And such great. a pleasure to be here. Glad so excited. You. We're excited. We to are. We're Patreon subscribers. Oh, so it. everyone should join. Oh, and we're I love this. Next, Do you uh, think Moshe's a good DJ? I We missed a lot. Yes. I mean, Thank yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That felt like a supportive, <laughs> but I haven't listened, and I love that. Thank you. <laughs> no, 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 I listened. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, okay, what's... like, no, I listened. I did not like what I heard. I was trying hey, to be polite good. about hey, it. What's good? I mean, yeah. 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 You did your best. Oh, <laughs> Doug. Okay. Yeah. Doug All right, out. I got my advice ready. Leave okay. Doug. Yeah. Host yeah. us. Man. Okay. You can't come in like this. Um. Hey, so... Um, she like does all the talking. Mm-hmm. She's like, well, Doug's literally <laughs> physically removed a bit as well. He's like, Doug, you well, can we sit in the foyer. We were told that he could join. So you uh, can. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I don't like to shave my armpits mm-hmm. or my legs mm-hmm. um, because I have very sensitive skin. And for my armpits, I always feel like they're weirdly less stinky um, when there's hair. Absolutely incorrect. But- no way that's true. That's <laughs> literally physiologically impossible. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, well. No, because the stink, if you got long armpit hair, the stink okay. drips, drips <laughs> go off down. the hair. Depending drips, on how long it is. It, has, <laughs> it's, it drips all the way away. If it's super long, it drips all it the looked, way away. From weirdly, your- my knees smell like body odor, <laughs> but my armpits. Because I, the, I got these fucking, <laughs> I got these car wash numbers. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Go ahead. Okay. So you don't want to shave. You don't want to shave your armpits. Okay. So I don't want to shave my armpits. Um, Or shave your legs. And or my legs. I don't really like to shave. Um, Mm -hmm. We have young kids and one of them likes to take a shower with us and I just don't have time. Um, And it's winter, you know, got to warm up. Mm-hmm. Uh, How much Doug warmer is- do you think your armpit hair makes you in the winter? <laughs> <laughs> um, but Doug is pretty turned off by it. Uh-huh. Uh, mm. And he does make his opinion known. How often? Um, <laughs> how often? Well, um, that's a question for yeah. On, on occasion, when it gets when it gets too long. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. It peaks out, I guess when it peaks yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't like really affect our sex life because you know pussy is pussy. Mm-hmm. That's what uh, I always say. Me and Nick always say that. That's <laughs> <laughs> what my company's called. That's a, he's a production company. They made Big Mouth. Pussy, pussy is pussy, pussy L- L- LLC. <laughs> No, that's just the name of the company. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's a non-comedy. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a separate <laughs> yeah. shell company. It's a, fi- it's a 501c3. <laughs> <laughs> it's your non-profit. It's my non-profit. <laughs> pussy is pussy. Okay, oh. sorry. Go ahead. But I can tell um, he's really trying hard to ignore it when we have sex. Mm. Um, and that kind of like puts me out of my flow. Sure. Um, and so like when we do talk about it, it kind of spirals into like conversations about bodily autonomy and the patriarchy sure. and uh, and the patreon if you guys want to get on there <laughs> they're on <laughs> hey uh, i got it you, know, you guys are great so i gotta so so what do you so what's the so, so my question is do i just like suck it up and shave or do we have a discussion about the patriarchy and like how he should suck it up and deal with it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can we do both? Yeah, it seems like. <laughs> no, what is Natasha? Where are you at, Natasha? Inside of the modern society we live in, and I didn't 
I didn't make the rules. I'm just following them. Uh-huh. You mean Listen. you're following them by being turned off? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, well, let me ask these boys first. Would Nick, would you like a, w- if, if, uh, long hair on, on your wife? I, everything, I mean, I think everything's relative to who you're with and what their vibe is, which like partly I'm Lily like, could totally pull that off. Sure. I mean, my, yeah, she would. <laughs> Not that you can't, honey, but you know, it's like, but, but my hair, I can see it because she's a real hippie, you know? Yeah. I, I think. I mean, here's the thing. I, here's what I'll start with. I have super sensitive skin. I hate shaving. I like if I now that I'm allowed to have a beard, like society has decided it's okay for men to have beards all the time. I if I don't ever have to shave my face again, I will take that up. Mm. Um, and but I would. But I'm also like. But I get it. We all have things about our appearance that our partner has to deal with, and stuff that they can also have. I, I want to talk about the patriarchy. My thing is, I'm like, what about like a Norelco? What about like a you like a beard trimmer where you like just like you're not shaving it to the skin. You're just like shaving. Her it. problem is not that it is sensitive. She's like, fuck the patriarchy. Right. I'm sick of doing this. And by you the way, like it. I feel the same. Here's the thing. When I hear you talking, I'm like. Yeah, yes. what are we fucking doing? Well, I well no. When first when I heard you talking, I was like, obviously you need to shave. You think I want to shave? You think anyone wants to shave? Um, and then as you continued to talk, I just thought maybe you were more advanced than me. Uh huh. In the in the in the conversations around the patriarchy. <laughs> well, well just in the to sense, bodily autonomy like, and body I, I, hair. I'm okay that I'm going to take five minutes out of my day every day. To shave my armpits so that Moshe doesn't like kind of get grossed out when we I've, have sex. He has because never I need said to get anything like that. A I, lot from him every day, and like I want him to be as attracted to me as possible. And if that means that in the morning I need to like really quickly like shave under my arms, which are not sensitive, so you know, if you really have this issue, that might be different. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't seem like that big of a price to pay to. Um, scintillate him enough P- well wait a minute <laughs> to have him always like be in st- a good mood what doug where do you stand on it well i have never i can i have never made a comment on natasha body hair wise because no I, but you would not like it because i have never had to because she's always been a person that shaved her legs and shaved her armpit so i never had to have that conversation i will ha- just also say that and i i don't i hope i'm not sharing out of school but they purely have armpit sex yeah that's right so yeah, yeah. that should be and we share that with our friends that's like our main thing that we talk to our friends about that's why nick knows that yeah we're like an armpit sex couple um having dated in the um in the kind 90s. of weirder in the 90s in the kind of weirder uh sort of uh, subculture burning manny kind of world i dated many women that didn't shave their legs and didn't shave their sure. armpits i have too. and and it's not is it my aesthetic preference? Uh, I, I guess no, but it's, no, but it's definitely never been something that I've commented on in a person or that stopped I was, you from trying to fucking get. Well, because what I always say, I always say, pussy, pussy is pussy. pussy. <laughs> that's right. That's my thing that I say. By the uh, way, that's a f- and it is a five hundred c three. So anytime that gets mentioned, there is a, a fifty dollar donation that is made. It's in, like the Shriners. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, but I agree. I would just also. I'm like, but you guys married each. You guys, you guys got married each other. Like you both know who you both are. Yeah. What? What? You can knew you- going into this that she was gonna fucking be like, I'm not shaving my legs and my armpits, right? No, I lied. Oh, you used to do it? Also, fuck the patriarchy, but not him. You know, you guys got kids together. He's cool. You know, you can still, like, fuck the patriarchy, but, like, I'm just going to, like, shave my legs, though, for this guy who, that's how he likes it. And we're roommates, and we sleep together, and I'm always rubbing up against him. I need to talk to him. He's the main person I talk to in a sexual way. Like, it's not that big of a deal to, like, give it up. I do have a specific opinion on this. Okay, maybe I'm I, wrong. I think that when it comes to women shaving their legs and armpits, the man just accepts... It's kind of like luck yeah. of the draw. You accept the person that, yeah. that, that it's not your business. It's so boorish and, and sexist to be like, could you change the way that the universe made your organism for my aesthetic preference? So if you are with a woman who never shaves, you just go, oh, cool, if you like that better. Because a lot of guys like a, a, I, a very hairy woman. Go, go ahead. I have a question, though. Yeah. I have a question for the ladies. Or for is like... What about like I don't like your beard? I don't like your mustache. Mm. I think that you consider shaving it. 
if your partner is like, I really don't like yeah, that. Yeah, like if every time I kiss someone, it smells like soup and it's like <laughs> scratchy. I'm just like, could you shave that, please? No, but it is obviously different, right? Because it doesn't have any, it's not connected to any thing. My dad has mustache. Oh, okay. You don't want to fuck your I dad. I mustache on a man. Mm-hmm. Oh, you me. should, Doug, you should say, take advantage of what she's doing and say, you know, my mom had super hairy legs and pits. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know? Yeah. Well, and, totally. I have an idea. All right. This is very, you don't have to answer, but how often do you have sex? Uh, well, we have a two-year-old and a 10-month-old. So every Ooh. night. So probably, uh, once a week. Okay. Yeah. So what if once a week you shave your armpit hair and legs and you guys have like a standing appointment like once a week? to fuck with you shaved because I also think that you're kind of getting off like having it grow out you like it and that's cool and you should appreciate <laughs> I, that Doug what, what do you guys think about that yeah I mean I think that's that's a good idea the only issue is like you know then it grows back and mm-hmm, it's stubbly yeah. I like, just I, think I do think there's uh, something about like if that's what she's into I think it's also like it's just <laughs> about your part finding out what your partner is like just you embracing whatever it is your partner's yeah. doing and be like, that's hot now. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I totally like, agree. like, Oh, you got it's, fucking underarm. Let me dig my fucking nose in there. I totally agree. Smell the, the nose smell yeah. because you have underarm hair. You will. Ad- <laughs> so it's not catching the odor. Well, I knew what I was getting into when we, you know, first started getting together. She had just gone to college in San Francisco. Oh, and classic I- armpit hair. <laughs> that's yep. Say no more, brother. So it was- I knew where I was. I knew where I stood. Yeah, yeah. you know where. It was. We call that a lib pit. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, here's a possible solution. I do think Nick is right. It isn't possible to switch context and go like, "What if I wanted to grow a mustache?" Because there's no con. It doesn't. It has no connection to enforced beauty standards for men. What did our therapist call it, hun? What about isms? Like right. it's just it like, just what about this? Well, okay, then even... what about this? And then. But here's my real solution. If you wanted to do it, you do what you want with your body, okay? But if you decided, you know what, I'm going to give it up for Doug, there are ways for you to to uh, not shave anymore and you could have your shit lasered off and it would never come back. So that's a that's a in the realm of possibility. I'm not saying you should do that. Here's what I'm saying you should actually do is split the difference. Shave one armpit and one leg and then you guys have oh. side sex so that Doug gets what he wants. <laughs> Right, and then you turn over, and you're the feminist that you always wanted to be on the other side. Mm-hmm. That's my real. Advice. I will say though that if someone had like leg hair, I feel like that would be less uncomfortable than someone growing out their leg hair. This is. Wait, I thought you were going to say something else. You don't Nick. want a girl with leg hair. Wait, uh, that's rough. I, I don't really? think you guys want that. I think I got it. I think I got it. I don't care. Doug, would you prefer leg hair or armpit hair? What's your preference? For smooth legs over. What about smooth. that? What about that? Even though it is enforcing matri- uh, patriarchal beauty standards, what if you guys only on the bottom half of your body? Yeah. And we all know you... that's the one that doesn't <laughs> fucking matter. The bottom half is mine. <laughs> the top half you can have for yourself, and that includes your mind. What? I'm not always touching her legs. I'm never. When am I touching her armpits? I, I think. Gotta... I think there is something slightly sexy about a, a hairy armpit. And I think, what about that? What do you think? What if you split the difference and you you shave your leg? I mean, I don't want to tell you that. It's your business. It's your body, your business. <laughs> but what if you? Yeah. But what if you do that? Doug Doug gets the legs and and uh, and you get the pits. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm down for the pits. Um, Why don't you shave your legs and your armpit hair and make him like? Go to like some women's studies classes with Ooh, you. Oh, that's a good and, one Or like too. figure out a book you guys can read together. Like it's not like y- him becoming more of a feminist doesn't necessarily have to be about, you know, you, uh, turning him off maybe. It has a know. little to do with the fact that you, th- that he looks like Eli Manning. <laughs> it's got to be connected. <laughs> do you look like Eli Manning in real life? Got Michael Phelps quite a lot. Oh, okay. I can see the Phelps for sure. Okay, and oh, that's what so it is—a high-functioning, depressive athlete, but also a guy that shaves <laughs> all of his uh, all of his uh, body hair so that he can have um, less saying, drag in the there water. There might be other ways to that issue, or other you know enlightening ways to get to like a more evolved state when it comes to like you asserting yourself. But also, Possibly. it is. But weird. I'm also old-fashioned. It it is weird for a man to jump into. Uh, you guys are married though, so even even weird 
um, sexism laden uh, expectations of conversation are still on the table because you're married. And so I think like finding a compromise is what's and some, maybe finding something Doug does that, that drives you crazy that he really cares about, you know, finding some solution where both of you are sacrificing and both of you are getting something that you want. I think that's your way. Video games. Video oh. games. Oh, oh shit. brother. Sorry, Doug. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring that oh, up. Oh, shit. Well, no, that's sacred to men. And so that actually you can't comment on. Yeah. Yeah. If he doesn't get to play video games, he'll get a massive rash under his arms <laughs> and on got, his legs every <laughs> week. He's got very sensitive thumbs. He has to <laughs> touch plastic. Oh, man. Well, I think you both have to love the uh, what's you know good about the other person. It's kind of cool that oh. she's finding her her feminism, you know, and, you know, he's he's trying to be game, try to be a little into the fact that she's, like, becoming this new person and b- becoming more her, feeling herself a little more, and I, I think it's all very positive. And, Moshe, maybe I'm going to grow up my arm hair for you. Yeah. Sounds fine to me. I, I, I'm kind of feeling you, actually. Hey, you do what and you I, want, I, I got to say, as someone with very sensitive skin, like... The, you can't under uh, underestimate how unpleasant it is to like shave all the time and like what that does to your body. Yeah. Um. So I I feel you on that. But I think <laughs> that uh that Doug, it's very easy to as a man go, hey, this is just the way it is. You know, guys like it. It's beauty standard. That's the way it is. So even if she does shave for you, I think Natasha's right. Finding the reason that it's in that it's pigheaded and insane to assume that a woman should comport to your beauty standards by reading a, some maybe reading some books of, about it, just wrapping your brain around what the ask is, why it's not just you going like, hey, it's just it is what it is. Michael Phelps did it. I do it. I think that's a good thing too. You guys should read what the feminine mystique. I don't know what the book is. You should read. Uh... It's called Penthouse Forum. Yep. <laughs> Ayn Rand's the fountainhead, and then I think he'd be good to go. Yeah, no, but but I mean, I think getting to this uh, talking together, like he seems pretty fun. You know what actually is good? Uh, you know what's a good read is the Archie comics. I don't know if you've seen that, but that's worth the read. <laughs> Only in the grocery store line. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All and right. if not, just go watch Riverdale. Yeah, actually, there it is. Sit. You guys can do that together. Um, all right. Well, you guys, good luck out there. How's two? How's two with the ten-month-old? How's that? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's rough. Yeah. It is. It's a little rough. Um, What's rougher, that or your legs? Like if you <laughs> run your hand up it. <laughs> My legs right now are pretty fuzzy and, and, uh, and fluffy. Oh, so. There you go. Oh, there we go. Doug, get into <laughs> it, dude. It's called her, her suit. I like them. Um, but he's right. a really good dad. He's a really good husband. And so I want him to, like, enjoy our sex. But I also am like. <laughs> we got two kids. We're. No. How about a, <laughs> five minutes off here? I was going to say, good for you. Two kids under two fucking once a week. You yeah. guys are doing good work. How about a spandex <laughs> bodysuit that you have printed your naked body on it, but and then you wear it over the hair and you cut a hole in the crotch. And so he can run his leg, hands up the spandex. This is, I think, actually a good idea. All right. Well, good luck, you two. I, I feel like everything's going to succeed And for thank you. you for being Patreon subscribers. We'll send you a of razor. Course. I love you guys. Thank you so much. We appreciate really it. Appreciate all you do. Bye, yeah. you guys. And just Thank remember, you. guys, the patriarchy is the patriarchy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting a new company. <laughs> that's my new, that's the new one. Sorry. <laughs> Bye, right, guys. Well, Bye. Uh, I think I, and that one is for profit. <laughs> that's it's a hardcore for profit. We invented profit. Yeah. Um, I feel like we helped them. I feel like we, I th- we, we went to a lot of different places tonight. Nick, you had some great advice. Yep. I think you. that's, that's such, that's such evolved advice. He's like, just try to get into what you're, whatever they're into. That's, that's right. what I'm into now. I think that's, we all should be doing that for ourselves and for whoever we're with. Cause th- it all gets old, no, right? Yeah, so you yeah. might as well try to get into something new. Yeah. And that's part of the, par- I, honestly, part of the process of having a long-term partner is you're like, the thing that they're into that you never w- knew you would be into, you're like, oh, I guess I'm into that. It just took a while for me to figure that out because that that's I this love person's thing. fucking armpits. Yep, that's my <laughs> thing. Getting- Pangolin armpits. Yeah. Okay, well, Peg. watch Nick's special Little Big Boy on Netflix. Nick, you're so funny. Your thank special's you. hilarious. Thank you. thank you, guys. We all know about your TV shows and your huge movie career. Bing bong. Thank you so much for coming over. Thank you guys for having me. I love the show. Nick, I love we you love guys. you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>